I've always been a logical and curious kind of person. I mean, that's just my personality. I remember when I was little, my parents gave me an electric train for Christmas. And then a couple hours later, my dad finds me in the garage and I'm throwing the locomotive against the cement floor, trying to break it open. He said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm just trying to figure out how it works. I mean, my parents, because of all the why questions I would ask, finally went out and said, here, and they bought me an encyclopedia and said, look, the answers are in there. Go look for them. Go find them yourself. I mean, that's just the way I was. And so I guess it's natural that I would become a journalist because journalists are looking for facts. They're looking for evidence. They're looking for data. They're looking for something that they can publish in the paper and have confidence it is true. Lee Strobel earned a Master of Studies in Law degree from Yale Law School and is the former legal editor of the Chicago Tribune. He is the best-selling author of several books that explore the evidence for the Christian faith. I guess given uh, my curiosity, it's not surprising that when I was in high school, science was my favorite topic because there the teachers actually encouraged me to like cut open frogs and find out how things work, which I thought was great. When I was a teenager, I had this deep trust in science, and I think part of it was prompted by the fact that I grew up in post-Sputnik America, where Eisenhower encouraged all young people to delve into science so we could catch up with the Russians. So to me, science sort of represented the empirical, the hard facts, the things that could be proven experimentally, and that was sort of the way in which I looked at life. I thought people who had faith, people who believed in supernatural things like God, I saw that as a sign of weakness because, you know, do you have any data to back that up? In the autumn of 1966, Strobel's interest in science led to a life-changing decision. I can take you back to the exact spot where I was sitting. It was in the third floor overlooking the asphalt parking lot. I was in the second row, the third chair from the front. When my biology teacher recounted in great detail this experiment that had been conducted in the early 1950s at the University of Chicago. This experiment that impressed Strobel so deeply was one of the most famous in the history of science. In 1953, Stanley Miller, a graduate chemistry student, tried to demonstrate how life first emerged on Earth. Miller attempted to reproduce the Earth's early atmosphere. He pumped hydrogen, methane, ammonia, and a small amount of water vapor into a maze of glassware. then spark the gases with electrical discharges to simulate lightning. After five days, he discovered what he had hoped for, a few simple amino acids, the basic building blocks of living organisms, had collected in the dark residue at the bottom of the glass. Many hailed Miller's experiment as proof that essential components of life could have formed in the oceans of the Earth billions of years ago. The philosophical implications of Miller's experiment were instantly obvious to me. And for me, it was a eureka moment because I heard this and I thought, wait a minute. If you can show scientifically that life can emerge without any outside assistance, if life can emerge just from naturalistic circumstances, then God was out of a job. From there, the acceptance of Darwinian evolution and full-blown atheism, for that matter, was pretty easy. Because if living organisms could emerge by themselves out of this primordial soup without the assistance of any kind of a god or, or supernatural intervention, then they certainly could develop naturally over the eons into more and more complex creatures, just as Charles Darwin theorized in his book on the origin of species. As Strobel embraced Darwinism and its atheistic implications,
he was surprised to discover that many Christians believe their faith was compatible with Darwinian evolution. There's no way you can harmonize neo-Darwinism with Christianity. I could never understand Christians who would say, well, you know, I believe in God, and yet I believe in evolution as well. You see, Darwin's ideas about the development of life led to his theory that modern science now generally defines as an undirected process, completely devoid of any purpose or plan. Now, how could God direct an undirected process? How could God have purpose and a plan behind a system that has no plan and no purpose? It just does not make sense. Didn't make sense to me in 1966, and it doesn't make sense to me now. In 1972, Lee Strobel married Leslie Hurdler, Five years later, Leslie, an agnostic, became a Christian. And I thought, this is divorce. This is going to be the end of our marriage. But all the negative things I expected to happen in her as a result of her newfound faith, they didn't happen. And instead, I saw positive changes in her values and her character and the way she related to me and the children. And I thought, wait a minute. She is attributing this to God. And I don't believe God exists. And so that was the main thing that prompted me to say, maybe I need to really investigate this and get to the bottom of this and determine, is there really any rational way I could ever believe that this kind of a God really exists and really causes this kind of transformation in a human being? And so I decided to use my legal training and journalism training, my scientific curiosity, to systematically investigate, is there any credibility to the Christian faith? Because science had played such an instrumental role in his turn to atheism,